In July 2022, Huawei released a new vehicle, the i2 M7. Yes, you heard that right. Huawei, the Chinese manufacturer of phones and other smart devices, has released yet another vehicle. It was only in December of 2021 that Huawei released the i2 M5. And before that, we had the SF5, which was released in April of 2021. The M7 and the M5 have been all the rage on social media, being the very first cars featuring Harmony OS, Huawei's operating system. Now you may wonder, how come a tech giant such as Huawei is suddenly selling intelligent vehicles? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to Screens, where we analyze the latest trends in the automotive industry, focusing on infotainment systems, connected services, and overall user experience in and around vehicles. First Apple, then Sony, and now Huawei. More and more technology providers are advancing in the realm of the automotive industry, moving beyond just providing hardware or software elements, but building and showcasing entire vehicles. Chinese tech giant Huawei is best known for its telecommunication products and smartphones. From 2016 to 2019, Huawei experienced a steep rise in its consumer segment revenue, with growth rates from 36, 45, 32 and 42 percent each year. But due to the global chip shortage, supply chain problems caused by the pandemic and several years of sanction from the US, its smartphone business has suffered a major decline in the past two years. From 2020 to 2021, Huawei's smartphone market share in China has declined by 72% and from 2021 to 2022 it fell by 64%. In 2021, the company's sales revenue had regressed to the approximate level of 2017. One of the main problems for this decline was the semi-stagnant smartphone business and profit gain. So to cut losses, Huawei changed its strategic course and sold its smartphone sub-brand Honor. Their other strategic step was to focus more heavily on smart vehicles. The Chinese EV market is currently bursting with unprecedented vitality. In the first four months of 2022, the number of new energy passenger cars, pure EV and plug-in hybrids, more than doubled from a year earlier to 1.49 million cars. And as you can see on the chart, the trend of growth has been going on during the full 13th five-year plan of China. Despite Huawei claiming on several occasions that it will not make cars on its own, the car business seems to be more and more attractive to them. Indeed, they have been working with automakers on car technologies such as autonomous driving for many years now. But their involvement in the industry goes way beyond just that. The days when Huawei was simply a phone manufacturer are long gone. It is a firm part of the automotive landscape. Indeed, Huawei has honed its influence and grew its network by creating different collaboration models with traditional OEMs. Three stages describe Huawei's transformation. At first, Huawei acted as a traditional component supplier. For this, it built on its core specialty, Information and Communications Technology, or ICT. Positioning itself as a supplier of components for smart cars, it provided OEMs with hardware and software elements. Examples include chips like the Kirin chip, which Huawei also uses in its smartphone, sensing hardware such as lighters, high precision maps, smart cabin elements, or cloud services. The second approach is the high mode, which stands for Huawei Inside and is Huawei's smart car solution brand. In this model, Huawei provides full stack smart car solutions, including computing and communication architecture or entire cabin and smart driving systems. One notable example of this collaboration model is ArcFox's Alpha S High Edition. The benefit for ArcFox, a sub-brand of the long-standing Bio Group, was to be able to integrate a plethora of new features and technology at a lower cost than having to develop everything in-house. For Huawei, this meant another opportunity to grow and learn in the automotive sector. Last but not least, we have the Huawei Selection Mode. In this mode, the tech giant is not only deeply involved into the product development and design, but also plays a role in the selection of core components, the general marketing and sales of vehicles and other areas. These cars will also enter Huawei's offline stores for sale. The SF5 was the first car to have been produced using this collaboration model between Huawei and Ceres. But it doesn't stop there. Huawei went a step further and not only provided software elements anymore, but whole operating systems for its vehicles. 
Yes, I am talking about Harmony OS, an operating system that is compatible with Android, Linux and Unix OS and connects different devices across the Huawei ecosystem, like computers, displays, smartphones, smartwatches and armbands. The ultimate goal here is to have a unified, seamless and smooth travel experience. The Ito M5 and M7 also were the first cars to have been produced using this operating system, which is why the expectations and the attention they received was so high. Now we know how Huawei is doing its business, but how were they able to do that? How were they able to get so deeply involved in the automotive industry? We will see that this was no spur of the moment decision, but rather a long path of thoughtful planning. Obviously, the decades of knowledge and market accumulated in the ICT industry has put Huawei in the pole position. Nowadays, no vehicle development can happen without the consideration and integration of ICT. As a leading company in the ICT industry, Huawei can provide a lot of technology for smart and connected vehicles. They also plan out early. Since 2013, almost 10 years ago, Huawei has worked with car giants such as Volkswagen, Audi or Mercedes on connected car technology. In 2015, for instance, Huawei partnered with Audi on its LTE modules, which provide the Audi Q7 SUV with the ability to support 2G, 3G and 4G networks. It's also teamed up with Volkswagen on the R&D of car connectivity application. In 2017, the chipsets from High Silicon, Huawei subsidiary, was introduced into Mercedes-Benz and Audi vehicles. Finally, they heavily invested into research and development. Huawei invested over 500 million US dollars in R&D in 2020 and 1 billion US dollars in 2021 on its smart car solution. That is lower than Great Wall Motors 1.4 billion and BYD's 1.6 billion, around the same as NIO's, and higher than Li's 500 million and Xiaoping's 800 million. Huawei's R&D team reached 5,000 people, making it one of the largest automotive dedicated ICT R&D teams in China. It is clear that in the coming years, Huawei will create a whole ecosystem using the Internet of Things and connecting devices to achieve a smarter and smoother transition between different areas such as the home, the car and the office. The first building blocks have already been laid. On the one hand side, Huawei has the knowledge. Knowledge in the ICT industry and in the automotive industry. On the other hand, it has built itself a huge network across both industries. And finally, it is striving to combine both worlds, using elements like the Kirin chip. The Ito M5 and M7 really show people how capable Huawei already is when participating in the building of modern smart vehicles. And we witnessed a successful case of tech companies collaborating with car manufacturers. Today, more and more tech companies are finding their way into the automotive landscape providing software, hardware, or even both. Sony revealed the first car concept at CS 2020. Google managed to integrate its Android Automotive OS in Polestar and Renault vehicles. And there are still some rumors around an Apple car project. News like these keep multiplying, and somehow we can't stop wondering, how will tech companies change the automotive landscape? And is Huawei already one big step ahead? If you want us to explore the difference between Harmony OS and Android Automotive OS, leave a comment mentioning what elements you're most curious about.